Have you ever wondered what it would be like if every planet in our solar system was the size of Earth? Well, it's time to dive into this mind-boggling scenario. Let's imagine what each planet would look like if they were as big as our beloved blue planet. Would the barren red landscape of Mars suddenly become a lush green oasis? Would the massive swirling gas giant Jupiter just disappear? And how would it affect our solar system as a whole? Are we all doomed? Buckle up and let's find out! The first planet on our list is Mercury, the smallest planet in our solar system. But now, forget about the moon like Mercury. Instead, picture yourself on the surface of a super dynamic incandescent inferno. There are a lot of craters and active volcanoes around you, and right in front of you is a huge, blinding bright sun. What a nightmare! But let's break these changes down. Well, along with the size of Mercury, both its mass and gravity would increase. In that case, it's possible that Mercury would have more atmosphere. Temperatures on Mercury are extreme, not only because it's very close to the Sun, but also because of its very thin atmosphere. So during the day, the temperatures there reach 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and at night, it becomes terrifyingly cold, down to negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. But now, when the gravity is stronger, Mercury could have a denser atmosphere, so the heat would be better distributed across the planet. And the atmosphere isn't the only thing that could make it hotter. If Mercury became bigger, it would likely experience increased internal heating due to gravitational compression. And hypothetically, its tectonic activity could increase. In other words, more interesting landscape, more mountains, and more scary active volcanoes. Congratulations, you've turned Mercury into Venus 2.0. For us, all these changes wouldn't be very pleasant. Now it would become much harder to send our spacecraft there, so it's better for Mercury to stay as it is, small, calm, and boring. Basically, the complete opposite of our next planet, Venus. So what would happen to Venus if it was Earth-sized? Actually, nothing. It wouldn't change at all all because Venus is already almost the size of Earth. It's even called the Earth's twin, although twin is a big word, of course. In reality, we couldn't be more different. Venus is often called the morning star because it's so bright and visible in the sky. But don't let its beauty fool you. This planet is one of the most inhospitable places in our solar system. Its surface is hotter than a freshly baked pizza, around 900 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's covered in thick clouds of sulfuric acid that would dissolve any human who tried to visit. So, unfortunately, you won't be planning any trips there anytime soon. So, let's move on to a planet that, unlike Venus, could potentially become a new home for us, Mars. Picture yourself standing on Mars's surface, watching the blue sunset and breathing in a refreshing breeze of air. Yes, you read that right, air. Moreover, you could be surrounded by plants, animals, and basically feel like you're on Earth. But how is that possible? Bigger Mars would have a stronger magnetic field and gravity. This would lead to a richer and denser atmosphere. It would likely have a wider range of gases, including oxygen. Wouldn't that be cool? Also, a denser atmosphere could distribute heat across the planet, so Mars would become much warmer and cozier. And here comes the most important change, liquid water. Mars actually has some frozen water at its poles and in subsurface reservoirs. But with a stronger gravitational pull, it could potentially stabilize liquid water on its surface. Hooray! However, it's not all fun and games. New Mars would also have a volcanic personality. It's already geologically active, but now its internal heat and pressure would skyrocket. That means more frequent and more crazy volcanic eruptions. Imagine how exciting it would be to witness such eruptions on another planet, if you manage to escape the consequences. In general, the planet could become greener and lusher, but not safer, although it would still be great to see it. But it's time to move on to the giants of our solar system. And if we're enlarging the planets before, now it's time to squeeze them really, really hard. If Jupiter became 11 times smaller, 
Oh boy, what a disaster that would be. The first thing we'd notice is a change in gravity. And I say we'd notice because now we'd have no choice but to move somewhere. Jupiter experiences from 30 to 100 collisions with large asteroids per year. No big deal. All because of its strongest gravity, which attracts them all and protects us. But now our big protective brother has turned into a small baby. Say hi to a bunch of asteroids. Oh, and say bye-bye to Jupiter. This planet is known for its thick, swirling atmosphere. But with a weaker gravitational pull, Jupiter would probably have a hard time holding on to it. So over time, it would slowly escape into space, leaving behind a thin atmosphere composed mainly of nitrogen and oxygen. We'll also have to bid farewell to the iconic appearance of another giant, Saturn. The most noticeable difference would be the disappearance of its famous rings. Made up of small particles of ice and rock, the rings are a unique feature of Saturn. But with Earth's gravity, they would either fall onto the planet or scatter into space. Bummer. Saturn is also a gas giant, just like Jupiter. Its atmosphere is made up of mostly hydrogen and helium. But if it were Earth-sized, its gases would be compressed due to the increased gravity. This would make it much denser. That means Saturn's overall size and shape would change. Theoretically, if we squeeze Saturn hard, it could potentially become a brown dwarf. It's a type of failed star that lacks the mass to sustain nuclear fusion, but emits heat and light. So, Saturn could stop being a planet altogether. The weather on it would probably have changed too. All its crazy storms, such as the famous hexagonal storm at its north pole, would have become weaker and calmer. The next giant is Uranus. Let's try to compress this poor fella. First off, the surface gravity on Uranus would be much weaker than it is now. Its atmosphere might also change. If Uranus was smaller, it could have a thinner atmosphere and different gases altogether. This planet is pretty chilly, with an average temperature of negative 353 degrees Fahrenheit. Ugh. But if it was the size of Earth, it might actually warm up a bit due to its reduced volume to surface area ratio. Don't get too excited though, it would still be way colder than the coldest spots on Earth. As you can see, gas giants don't easily go through all this shrinking, except perhaps one of them. Surprisingly, small Neptune would become much friendlier. For starters, it would probably be a rocky planet with a tiny atmosphere. That means no more gas giant but instead, a planet that's easier for humans and critters alike to live and move around on. Speaking of movement, because of the smaller size, the gravity on this new Neptune would be almost the same as Earth's, making it a heck of a lot easier to walk and jump around. No more floating away into space. Now, the atmosphere of the original Neptune is so thick you could barely see your hand in front of your face. And the surface pressure is about 100 times that of Earth's atmosphere. But our new Neptune would be much different, with a much thinner and less dense atmosphere. It would still have some methane, water, and ammonia in it, but nowhere near as much as before. Finally, the temperature. <laughs> the current Neptune is freezing, with an average temperature of about negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit. But if it was the same size as Earth, it would likely be much warmer, just like Uranus. Ah, that's more like it. What a planet that would be. That's it for the changes in the planets. But what would happen to the entire solar system if we made all the planets so small? It's hard to predict, but it's clear that their gravity and orbits could change a lot. It's unlikely that any of them would have flown into outer space or crashed into each other or something like that. But many of their orbits would probably become quite unstable. And the number of collisions with asteroids would have increased significantly. Of course all this is purely speculation, it's not like we can actually test all this, but it's still a pretty interesting thought experiment, and it makes you appreciate just how unique and special our solar system really is. 2022 and 2023 have been landmark years for discovering new, fascinating worlds. Last year, NASA surpassed 5,000 confirmed exoplanets. The list is incredibly diverse. It includes rocky super-Earths, gas giants like Jupiter, ice giants like Neptune, and so on. And this is just the beginning. 
there might be more than a trillion exoplanets in our galaxy alone. But the most important question is, how many of them are habitable, you know, for us? Are there any planets on this list that could have life on them? Or that could be a future home for us? Of course there are. And in 2022-2023, we found as many as five of them. So buckle up and hang on for a wild ride beyond our solar system. The first planet on our list is Wolf 1069b, a boring and stodgy designation. So I'll simply nickname it Wolfie, because hey, who's gonna stop me, NASA? (laughs) A new study conducted by 50 starry-eyed astronomers confirmed something awesome. This exoplanet, Wolfie, which is located just 31 light-years away from us, could potentially be a rocky world. In other words, theoretically, it's a habitable planet. The team behind this discovery used a technique called radial velocity to detect the exoplanet. This is a way scientists study the movements of stars and planets. It's as if when you're playing catch with a friend, as they throw the ball to you, you can see it coming closer and closer. It's kind of like radial velocity. When a planet is moving towards us, it makes the star it orbits appear to be coming closer to us. When the planet is moving away from us, it also makes the star look more distant. Scientists can use this information to figure out what the planet is doing and how big it is. And that's how they found Wolfie. This exoplanet is estimated to be the Earth's size and about one and a third times the mass of our planet. It's orbiting a red dwarf star who I'll call Wolfie's mama. But here's the real kicker. Wolfie orbits within its star's habitable zone, which means it's a prime candidate for liquid water to exist on its surface. That's like hitting the exoplanetary jackpot. Ooh, wish I had a ticket. The study estimates that if Wolfie does have an Earth-like atmosphere, temperatures could rise as high as 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which would mean liquid water could pool on the planet's day side. But here's the catch. The exoplanet is tidally locked to its star, meaning that the same side always faces the star. Just imagine, one side of the planet is always basked in the warmth of its star, while the other is in eternal darkness. Like middle school. (laughs) Just kidding. The team behind the discovery believes it's a prime candidate for further studies. But we'll probably have to wait another 10 years for answers. Until then, we'll just have to keep searching the skies with our telescopes and crossed fingers. Our next planet is TOI-700e. Hmm, what's a good nickname? NASA has just discovered a new planet that's set to take the galaxies by storm, or shall we say by orbit. I'll nickname it Toys Were Us. It's almost the size of Earth, most likely has liquid water on its surface, and it's only 100 light-years away. We're not talking about a road trip, of course, but this is close enough in the grand scheme of things. Toys Were Us is the fourth planet in its system, and it's got a bit of a short orbit, just 28 days to circle its star. Well, at least you would have a birthday every month. (laughs) Hooray! This time, the discovery was made using the transit method. Planets themselves are incredibly small and hard to detect. But when a planet is in front of its star, it blocks some of the light coming from it, making it look a little bit dimmer. As soon as the planet moves away, the star gets brighter again. So, to find the planet, scientists watch very carefully to see if the star's brightness changes. If it does, that means there's probably a planet playing hide-and-seek with us. And that's how they discovered Toys Were Us. The test mission discovered it. It discovered 66 new exoplanets and 2,100 more candidates waiting to be confirmed. TESS has been very busy creating imaging for 75% of the sky. Talk about efficiency! Toys Were Us is located in the optimistic habitable zone, between planets C and D, but it may be tidally locked, just like Wolfie, so we might have to settle for a one-sided water world. The discovery of Toys Were Us is a promising prospect for future follow-up observations, and it demonstrates the potential for TESS to find even smaller exoplanets in the future. Who knows? It may find a new home for humanity among the stars one day. Or at least, a new vacation spot. Next, we have twins GJ1002b and GJ1002c. The galaxy just got a little bit closer to us with the discovery of two exoplanets, which I'll nickname Hansel and Gretel, that are just a stone's throw away from our solar system. 
That's right, these two Earth-like planets are located less than 16 light-years away, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump in space terms. For comparison, Proxima Centauri b is the closest Earth-mass exoplanet at 4.2 light-years away. So, these two new neighbors are among the closest to us. They both orbit a red dwarf star with barely one-eighth the mass of the Sun. It's quite cool and faint, but that's okay, since both planets are very close to it. Hansel takes 10 days to orbit its star, while Gretel takes just over 21 days. Even more birthdays, I guess. The discovery was made by an international scientific team and was no small feat. The team had to work together with two instruments, Espresso and Carminis. The result? A cafe latte. Nah. What they got were measurements so accurate, you could practically count the number of craters on the planet's surfaces. The big deal is, the planets are located in the habitable zone of their star and are just the right size, making them excellent candidates for future atmospheric studies. The lead author says, Nature seems bent on showing us that Earth-like planets are very common. With these two, we now know seven in planetary systems quite near to the Sun. Who knew our neighbors could be so friendly? In conclusion, the discovery of Hansel and Gretel is a giant leap for humankind. So let's all raise a glass of H2O, or whatever they drink on exoplanets, and celebrate it! The last planet on our list is LP890-9C, which I'll call Bob. This super-Earth, located about 98 light-years away, is roughly 40% larger than our home planet. Moreover, it has a twin, which I'll nickname Ray, which is up to 75% larger than Earth. More space is always good, right? The two planets orbit around the red dwarf star. Unfortunately, Ray is quite hot to the touch, with an estimated temperature of 253 degrees Fahrenheit, so don't touch. Its sibling, Bob, is located in the habitable zone of its star, making it a prime candidate for the potential of life. But let's remember that the actual temperature of the planets depends on their atmospheres. It's possible that Bob, being the outermost planet, has a runaway greenhouse effect, making it more like Venus than Earth. So it might be too hot to be habitable at all. But let's not lose hope yet. The James Webb Space Telescope, launched in December 2021, is on the case. With its cutting-edge technology and powerful instruments, including spectrographs, it can peer into the atmospheres of exoplanets and reveal which ones might be habitable. So let's see what it discovers. This planet has been listed as the second most favorable habitable zone terrestrial planet. Now it's on the list with seven other Earth-like planets, all about 40 light years away from us. Maybe they'll become our new homes in the future. Maybe we should fix the home we have. But until then, enjoy this moment and celebrate all these new discoveries. Who knows how many more planets we'll find in the future, considering how much technology develops each year. Thousands? Millions? Meanwhile, Bob and Ray, Hansel and Gretel, Toys Were Us, Wolfie and her mama will all be out there waiting for us. What would happen if our planet turned into two separate ones, one consisting entirely of land and the other one of water? Could we survive on any of them? And how? Well, you're lucky, because I'm going to answer this question right now. So let's imagine that our Earth has turned into two separate planets sharing one orbit. Let's call these hypothetical planets rock and water. I know, I know, very original. Anyway, let's start with the rock, because this one is much easier to imagine. All we should do is ask, what would happen if all the oceans on the Earth suddenly dried up? Now, we know that water is life. It covers 70% of the surface of our planet. There's so much water that even if all the oceans and seas disappeared, some of it would still be left in underground rivers, streams, and so on. But unfortunately, it would not be enough for us to survive. All sea creatures disappear. After some time, all other animals, plants, and of course, people share their fate. Completely dried forests burst into flames sooner or later and burn until there is nothing left but ashes. But hey, it's not that bad. Well, it is bad, but life can still exist, in some form. There are some bacteria that make cockroaches jealous. They're able to survive absolutely any conditions. For example, extremophiles have already evolved to live without water. These little guys can survive in an incredibly hot or acidic environment without water or even sunlight. 
Without them, the rock becomes an empty, lifeless planet. Although, who knows? Maybe someday extremophiles will be able to evolve into some wildly cool forms that can survive literally anywhere. But for now, the rock is just a floating rock, basically. Oh wait, did you imagine a hot desert or some sort of red-hot steps? Surprise, surprise! This planet is actually extremely cold. You see, without water, there would be no atmosphere. The atmosphere consists of a concentration of various gases, including hydrogen and oxygen. Some H and O, you know where this is going, right? Yep, no water, no atmosphere. And since it is the atmosphere that accumulates all the heat we need, the planet would be very cold without it. The contrast between cold and less cold places also becomes very sharp. You see, water is basically a climate stabilizer. The oceans absorb almost all of the heat of our sun. They distribute it evenly over the Earth to make sure it doesn't get too cold or too hot. So without it, the rock gradually turns into a cold desert. The average temperature on this planet is around minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. At both poles, the temperature is extremely low, about minus 300 degrees. And even in the warmest places, it doesn't exceed 20 degrees. These warm places are now the former oceans because their dried-up depths are located much closer to the hot core of the planet. Wait, I hope you don't imagine this planet as covered in snow, either. We don't have any water at all, remember? It's just a very cold rock. At this point, we're just a bigger and browner version of the Moon. The Moon is basically a waterless piece of Earth, after all. But hey, what happens to volcanoes? They're basically our last hope to stay warm, aren't they? Unfortunately, volcanic activity is decreasing due to a lack of water. You see, volcanoes and their eruptions happen because of the collisions of two tectonic plates, the oceanic and continental ones. The weight of the water presses on the oceanic plates. They go under the continental plates and form volcanoes. So if there's no water weight, then there's no volcanoes and volcanic activity drops significantly. The rock now is just a planet full of many incredible high mountains. And every time the tectonic plates collide, they form more and more of these mountains and trenches, including some very big ones, like the famous Mariana Trench. I would say, be careful not to fall, but hey, there's no one to fall there. So, Also, there's no weather anymore. No water means no more snow, ice, or rain, or even clouds. The wind would probably be quite strong, though. Well, that's the fate of the planet rock. Not very bright, so let's just go see how the water planet is doing. Many, many billions of years ago, I wasn't around then, our Earth actually was a planet entirely covered with water. Then, about a billion years ago, the sea level dropped. The land appeared. This has changed the atmosphere of our planet forever, and that's how life was born here. But what happens if it returns to its original state? Well... To answer that question, we should first learn more about the ocean planets. So what does one of these look like? Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. We have no idea. We haven't found any planets of this type because they're incredibly rare. I mean, there is one planet that is low-key and could be called an ocean planet. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Still, even this one doesn't look the way you probably imagine. The water on it is in a very weird, unique state. Scientists have called this hot ice, or superliquid water, and we've never seen anything like this before. In general, though, the actual ocean planets are very hard to find due to many physical reasons. These planets require very specific temperatures, pressures, and so on. But alright, just hypothetically, what would such a planet look like? Well, first of all, of course, it cannot be made entirely of water. I hope you didn't actually think that there could be just some gigantic water blob spinning around a star. It should still be a planet with a core and some kind of foundation. So let's just imagine that all the water on the former Earth has mixed into one giant salty ocean. Wow, that would be a dream come true for the sea creatures, but not for the rest of us. The only animals that could survive in this situation, except fish, are probably the birds that can swim and feed on fish. Now, I think even if the sea level rose significantly, at least a couple of islets could still stay above the water. Such islands would be the former peaks of huge mountains like Mount Everest. So if these birds build their nests there, they can even survive for some time. But what about you and me? Well, we still have a chance. If we had enough time to prepare for the huge flood, 
We could stay safe either in giant submarines or on giant ships. We can grow food on board and fish from the ocean. But without the Everest Islands, we are unlikely to last long. If something breaks and we have nowhere to dock, we won't be able to fix it. Unfortunately, we no longer have drinking water. Now we can get it only from rain or by filtering seawater. But we have to store it someplace, right? And all these water containers would take up a lot of space and be very heavy. But in general, planet water is not as bad as it might seem. It's quite warm. The average temperature here is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And the gap between the lowest and highest temperatures is minimal, from minus 20 degrees at the poles to 70 degrees at the equator. Compared to planet rock, this ain't bad at all. Planet water would also be slightly larger than the Earth in radius due to the volume of, yes, water. The density of this planet would be, on the contrary, quite low. The gravity could become a bit weaker, too. Now, as for both planets, if we place them in the Earth's orbit, after some time, they would still move away from each other and follow different trajectories. They would have aligned themselves not to collide with each other. On one of them, the year would last 12 months, and on the other one, 10 or 11. And that's about it. A fun fact. All of this can actually happen in the future. First of all, the Earth's crust is gradually becoming thinner. Hey, I like thin crust. On my pizza. On my planet, mm, not so much. So, one day, water can really flood our entire land. On the other hand, in a couple of billion years, when our sun begins to expand and turn into a red giant, all the oceans on our planet will really dry up. Alright, take a deep breath and shake it out. That's enough of this grim fairy tale. It's a waste of time to worry about such things so far off when, today, I can't find my wallet anywhere. I thought I put it over here. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.